Okay, I, I was just uh, actually taking, telling, telling Shobha about this is a wonderful format you people have devised. The minister comes right in the beginning, says a few words and disappears. Excellent. And in, in India, we have a system by which the ministers are considered VIPs and they speak last. Because the, the higher you are in the ladder, the, 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 the later you will speak. That ensures that they spend a larger amount of time in the, in, in the event. But anyway, this is a good format. At least they come. So congratulations on that. But let me, let me congratulate uh, the India New Zealand Business Council. I mean, I'm really quite amazed at this event. You have done a really good job. And I'm happy that Fiki signed an MOU with you to, to do this. And, and thank you for, for arranging this, because you've got a wide variety of people from academics, from business, and of course, from government. And, and that's really, really the way forward. Um, we are from FIKI, and FIKI brought this delegation across. I just wanted to tell you very briefly a little bit about FIKI. We are a large organization because India is a large country. Uh, we represent directly and indirectly a quarter million Indian companies, quarter million. So that makes us not just a large Indian organization, but probably one of the largest in the world. Incidentally, we have, uh, we work in, at last count, we worked in 65 sectors across through 86 committees. We have committees by which our staff and, and, and Mohan heads our skills committee. This kind of, these committees are the ones where the private sector comes in and then runs the, the whole thing for us. We have over uh, 600 staff. We have 14 offices in India and we have 14 overseas. So it's, it's a large, large one, and we connect across many, many areas. And thank you for this opportunity where you're talking about business and you're talking about education uh, together. But let me take you to this first. You, you're doing the summit saying knowledge, skills, technology. It's wonderful to put them three together, but just think about it a little bit. What is the way that you impart knowledge, skills, and technology? Because that's what makes it into a business. Otherwise, what are we talking about? And if you look at 100 years ago and you look at 100 years, or you look at the situation today and how it's emerging in the world, you will see that knowledge imparting was through education, skills was through training colleges. Both of these have virtually remained unchanged. A classroom of 100 years ago is a classroom today. Yes, there is some differences in the technology, as we saw some of the earlier speakers talk about it. But the difference is the third one, which is technology. It's the one that none of us know anything about. Because it's moving so fast, it's completely changing the way we'll impart knowledge and skills in the future. In fact, knowledge and skills are imparted more outside the formal institutions than they are within them. And this is what we have to prepare for. Because why do we have to prepare for it? Because at the end of the day, knowledge, skills, technology, all of them are businesses. They're businesses because that is what the return on investment comes from. Otherwise, why are we there? The jobs provide gainful employment. The companies make products and offer services. And investment takes place on the basis of that. So the linkage is actually business, which actually brings the three together. And in fact, you, you, this is where the, the New Zealand-India connectivity, I think, becomes that much more important. Because what is it that India offers? What is it that New Zealand offers? And what can we actually do together? I heard two of the ministers mention today about the free trade agreement, which is still pending to be signed. Now, just look at it seriously. You are a country with, what, 4 million, 5 million people? We are a country with 125 million people million people making it into 1.25 billion. What is the synergy between these two markets? Let's be practical about this. It's only when you offer something which is worthwhile to India that India will want to offer something worthwhile to you. What does a trade agreement do? It basically brings tariff falls down. And here's a point I want to make, and I make it all over the place. After GST, the average tariff in India is 2.65. 2.65% is nothing. So in, in our opinion, trade deals are not that important. It's partnerships and connectivity and business which is more important. That is what brings people together. And, and, and on this particular one, the edutech that we're talking about, what does FIKI bring to the table? 
we bring to the table this connectivity between education and business. That connectivity, and, and Mohan spoke about it a little, little earlier, India is a, has already emerged as the second largest startup and innovation country in the world. This is happening all the time. So that's the connect with the small and businesses that the, that the minister was just referring to. All these are new businesses, all these are small businesses. And that's the connection that we should impart between New Zealand and, and with India. But with this, I'll just quickly move to uh, a wonderful presentation that Shobha and her team had done for me. So I can't disappoint them by not going through it. Yeah, so how is technology impacted? We're talking about technology at the end of the day is, is what we were talking about. How is this impacted? If you look at it, technology is becoming sharing, it's becoming resource sharing, and it's become space sharing. All of these are together changing the way businesses actually happen. They're building blocks of technology. I won't go into details of it, but every aspect of it is covered in the sense that you have uh, cyber security, augmented reality that we spoke about earlier, big data, addictive, man uh, addictive manufacturing, system integration. All these are part of things that you know about. It is, in a sense, something which is now impacting every part of the, of the value chain. That is why technology is so important for, for business. And in doing so, the only way to move forward is to look at how this knowledge sharing will happen in the education sector, because that's the one that we are talking about today. So in this, when you look at classrooms, and we talked about how the classrooms have remained the same for the last 100 years, or maybe even 500 years, there's a certain structure, and there's a reason for it, because they bring discipline along with, for education, you need some kind of discipline. But what is happening within the classrooms? And that's where you have to now make them into global classrooms, into experiential learning, and all these new ways of using technology to impart knowledge in a manner which has not been done in the past. So if you do knowledge sharing, you will realize that not only do you need these global classrooms, but you need how you need to link this up with this new age of innovation that we are all seeing, that we are all part of today. How do we link business, education, and this new way of, of innovation? So this, this presentation, incidentally, would be available to you for those who want to see it, so I'm not going to spend time on it, but basically go on to make this very important point which you see here. In 2015, we did a listing, which is last year, which is a listing of the main skills needed for business. They were complex problem solving, coordinating with others, people management, critical thinking, negotiation. And what happens within the next five years? Number one, complex problem solving remains because that will always be an issue for business. The second part that comes in is critical thinking. So suddenly coordinating is out of the window. You get critical thinking and you get creativity. Creativity becomes an essential tool in business. Are we imparting this in education? I was very happy to hear that in one of your colleges you have a degree in creativity. Wonderful. Because actually creativity comes, and the internship program you spoke about, ma'am. Creativity is that's where you learn on the job. How can you convert your ideas into actually innovations and into startups, and that's where creativity actually comes. And people management and, and, and all this emotional intelligence, service orientation, all these things are changing. The very skills required for business are now changing. So the way to address this is to look at how can we, how can we share resources in industries with technology and with individuals. So whether you're doing your smart manufacturing design or whether you're looking at integrated products, Individuals will come up with ideas, but those ideas have to become business-like, and that's the secret of going forward. Just like bookstores became e-bookstores, and record stores became streaming music and movies, and taxis became ride-sharing, similarly, every aspect of the human businesses or, or interaction is going to change. Uh, you've heard this several times, and you'll continue to see it as, as, we, as we move ahead in this world. So finally, I will just end with saying that there is many examples of, of cloud sharing, of, of, uh, of you know, the, the box, which is the cloud storage, of Citrix, which is storage services, Ignite, which is centralized administrative data sharing, and SugarSync, which is a glo global platform for, for linking up technologies and, and operating systems. All this is the way forward. Is education ready for this? When the human when the human body and the human person has to connect with technology through probably robotics. 
This is the biggest question for the future. And can we as economies be ready to prepare for it, be ready for it? Because this is what will determine our success in the future. Thank you.